Right. Commissioner Akombe has left the group. Tabukati <laughs> is typing. Ezra Chiloba has been removed from the group. <laughs> He's exited. <laughs> this is Afropolitical. <laughs> Great, this is two guys, two mics, two drinks at our local AJ's bar in Westlands. This is Afropolitical. I'm James Smart. I'm having Tumbo. We're here again, a mm. few days oh, to goodness. an event on mm. the 26th. <laughs> an event? Get, yeah, elections and events. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, you wanted to find that? No, that was a bit. Uh, uh. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> but let's get to your comments. Uh, we started with Willie's the virus <laughs> on, on Facebook. <laughs> That's an actual name, by the way. Uh, and mm. I suppose mm. speaking about a Kuro court, says a court is going nowhere. I think he has been paid by Jubilee government. IBC also <laughs> claims that all presidential candidates will be on the ballot, and some have been declared bankrupt. Hell no, we need reforms. But at the end of the day, uh, he's there by virtue of a court ruling, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to read more into that, uh, that's your uh, prerogative, but uh, it's, uh, it's clear as daylight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, in as far as, uh, I, I think it's because now he's fighting with the, with the opposition uh, leader. What chance do you give him on the ballot? Um, to be honest, I think slightly more. He's going to get, uh, he's going to get... He got that two thousand. The last he got time. that two thousand, yeah. and uh, he's gonna get uh, more by just because he is seen as a next opponent. Uh, you have uh, Raila saying he's not; he's withdrawn, which he hasn't uh, technically, uh, but he is saying he has. And uh, given that the situation, probably a number of the because. Given who's good, people, who's supporters? I'm, no, I'm trying to get who supporters are moving to vote for him because he doesn't have his support supporters, at least going by the last election. So are Raila supporters going to move to him or who Kenyatta supporters are moving to him? Who supporters essentially shifting? I think a little bit of both uh, and only because people, for those guys who keep saying they are tired of the process yeah. and they need uh, and they consider that the two leading candidates who run Raila are polarizing and they yes. pull from different parts. So just right. by virtue of that you'll see quite a number of guys saying you know what I'm tired of the two and he is a third option funny enough his party is third way alliance. Great that's a good segue to Iswa all right says I must confess that I too am kind of lost by the legal spiring going on so I'm just chilling for any eventuality to unfold. After all is said and done, let's hope for peace. We've become a, a litigious country. Uh, it's too which, much. Which, which is, I, I, it's I, not I would, a bad I, thing per se. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. I, I think it's a good thing that at the very least we are recognizing that we can go to an arbitra and we are, want to be a country of laws and at least we are entrenching constitutionalism, I think. But also, it's also exposing us uh, and exposing certain loopholes I think might have to be filled uh, post the election process once people are a bit sober. Um, like what? Um, when you find uh, one ruling going against another ruling, going against another ruling, when you find certain uh, uh, clauses, which I'm sure we'll get to, which uh, I think were inserted maliciously into the electoral laws, um, I think those are some of the things, and you, you, you've seen uh, even uh, Jubilee trying to rectify some of the issues that had been brought up uh, by, other, by the opposition leading up to this election. I obviously have no problem with the legal lawfare and the lawfare. It just makes more money for lawyers, so maybe uh, after this we'll have to go to law school and earn that law degree <laughs> or whatever curious. it is. Uh, but <laughs> my point is this, I think that it, in the long run it's a good thing. that. At, for a very long time in this country, we've accepted and allowed our politicians to be the final word on everything that happens in this country. Mm. Now, we've seen how far that took us in 2007 when we exhausted all other means mm. when politicians brought us to a place whereby they could not meet. You know, now today we are in that same place, but the result is almost very different because there's another arbitra. It's not since I cannot agree with you or whatever you've done is so something that I could not expect, then the resultant is violence. 
So in many ways, I think the judiciary and the legal profession in many ways is helping us to build this idea that we have laws and there's, need, there's no need to lose life. You know, there's no need for us to fight about anything. Let's meet in court. That said, uh, what would you say of the media's role also in this? Because at the end of the day, uh, even, even if you have an arbiter, uh, if the storytelling is wrong, you have a situation where people think we're on the brink of uh, another violence or war. True. Uh, the, so one, one end of things has been, is, is right, which is the, the, the legal bit of it, the lawyers yes. and the judiciary, and, and us at least agreeing all parties moving to court you know mm -hmm. and seeking some sort of address the media on the other hand i think took the wrong lesson from 2007. Uh, 2007 the media was sort of blamed for the violence mm -hmm. and you saw from then on you saw a media that wanted to hide behind everything and say you know what we don't want to be responsible for another violence yeah uh, all we want to do is you know maintain peace we just want we want nothing to do with anything uh, so it's a bit of extremes of those things but it's either we we can be peace or we can be too bold and you can't have both of the things so i think the media in this country would have to move to where politics has moved or where Judiciary. Our, 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 our judiciary has moved because I think our politi political class has moved to where the judiciary is. No, it, right? has, it has. It has. It has. Yep. And it's such a shame that the media is not stepping up to its plate and start telling stories, real stories of what's happening. The country is certainly not in the brink of collapse. It's right? not. We have political problems. That yes. is true. But we are not in the middle of collapse. We are not. All right. That's your comments. Off to our first topic of the day. <laughs> All right. And just when we thought this week was going to end without drama that we've exhausted all our drama accounts <laughs> the commissioner ibc rosalina kombe dr rosalina kombe she and her phd dr rosalina kombe i mean in this country everything is questioned all right whether well. you, even if you're born you know why, why are you really born <laughs> you might be a spirit walking is that around. What to do? yeah it affected obama <laughs> yeah. years later yeah so she went to Dubai to inspect the ballot papers mm -hmm. and she rerouted to the US where she resigned. Um, big thing, because uh, essentially her resignation was in a big way uh, opening up on the goings on inside the commission. Mm -hmm. Stuff that we knew about, but it was on the lowdown. All right? um, and no one had the braveness to, to say these things are happening, you know, that A1. Uh, the commissioners are almost disagreeing and agreeing on everything or, or that, that sort of thing. But anyway, Akombe resigns. I think uh, it was a foolish move. Yeah, it's a uh, right to do, to do what she did, but uh, she chickened out of a process. Um, it's, uh, we are in, uh, I think this is the most important uh, time in our, in our election uh, history. Yeah, and uh, for you to remove yourself out of that for personal feelings, because at the end of the day, read her statement. It's I this, I felt this, what not. It's not about you. It's about the process. It's about the people. You're supposed to sit there as a commission, discuss with the other guys. And at the end of the day, the same thing that happened with the Supreme Court, where you have people disagreeing, but they are still part of the Supreme Court. Yeah, you disagree. If your opinion is not taken, you don't say okay because they did not listen to me. You know what? I'm out of here. Isn't the question of good conscience and personal responsibility what we ask people in public office to, to have? Yes, and, say, and, and, the, and, and at the end, of what, what is most important now is that we go to an election, yeah? And if she says now, as she did, that uh, she does not feel the elections would be, would be credible, yeah? Her views around that why and remember when you read even the text of our, of our resignation her text says that the she wanted the election date moved yeah she wanted the election date moved to what and i think if if you are you want the election date moved yeah against a supreme court ruling what are you thinking right so this is a good segue to what happens so Akombe leaves, then Wafula Chebukati, the chairman, holds a presser, uh, and a very emotional one, in very many respects, mm -hmm. um, and says, you know what, I have essentially given conditions of staying in that job yep. that I must meet, you know, the two candidates, 
the commission the commissioners cannot continue keep taking me hostage with votings and that sort of thing i must be given the opportunity to sort of lead this commission now that's 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 where now we we get into these murky waters of first uh, why would wafula shabukati want to meet the two candidates one who has withdrawn uh, and the other one who wants to go on an election on 26th and then uh, he hasn't withdrawn which is why he met he was meeting candidates no. I mean, in, 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 in all intents and purposes, Rodinga is not on this ballot. Un he is. Until, until, no, he's, 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 he is he's, he's on, on the, the ballot. ballot until he signs Form 24A, which he has refused to sign. Form 24A, Marvin, all right, is something that is issued after a, pres a fresh presidential nomination. Okay, there was no nomination on this one. All right? And you yes. only withdraw three days after. Before, because after that, then there's a period, is it 14 days for Gazette Man. So there wasn't, this process wasn't. And again, it could be he didn't sign it, but also it's part of the problem of IBC just getting wrong legal advice. All right, that they made they muddied the water so much that it's impossible for us even to know what is the legal stand of a candidate. You know, that is the problem. You have a candidate uh, in the name of Raila who expressly said he's not going to sign the form. And um, I, because I it is, in his view, it, is, it doesn't think he has, it has any legal standing. No, but also because he would want to go to court after the elections. And if you're not uh, a candidate, if you've removed yourself as a candidate uh, in, in, in the process, uh, you cannot be able to petition the, the Supreme Court. So and I think you cannot be on the new, new election. And you cannot be in the new election. So uh, clearly, that's the game you're playing. This one is not yes. Right. yes. So I think that's the game he's playing. He's saying, okay, look, I've withdrawn. Uh, so is it the quote unquote? It's a political withdrawal. It's a political withdrawal. Not a legal withdrawal. It's not legal. Okay, I can live yes. with that. Um, with regard to the chairman, and um, again, if you, his words were very clear. He said he cannot assure a credible election, but only, yeah, there was a caveat. He could not assure it because of political interference yeah and the political interference he's talking about is something we've also we already started seeing where he his team cannot train uh, returning officers in certain counties yeah where you have pronouncements by governors who are saying and warning people do not dare to go out and vote that is political interference and well, that's that, why that, that is one part of the political no, interference yes all right this and, and he continues if you are to keep on his statement yes that neither of the sides is absolvent on this issue. Yes. All right. So there is a jubilee side as well. Yes. I don't know what jubilee has done, unless you get me. <laughs> <laughs> on the question of receiving legal advice. Yes. Which is something that he mentioned. He yes. said that it's been impossible for the commission. In fact, the commission has lost all the cases, all the cases. All right. Since he got into office. Yes. Because they've been receiving wrong legal advice. And I the don't legal know who's advice advising them all. They get is this 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 how he mentioned that they, they get legal advice and it has to be voted on. And the majority who come with a partisan point of view vote on a wrong legal advice despite being three, four other options. And the commission is bound by that. That's why they have to move to court with those okay. things, all right? And in his view that is problematic. Okay. Which which explains why A for instance, why he one had to go to the Supreme Court when clearly anyone knew that there was no point of going to the Supreme Court in this time. Um, and the commission, even in the beginning, uh, the KI case, instead of following what the court, High Court had uh, sort of uh, ruled, the, com the, the commission appealed that case. All right? Oh, well, it's within their rights. It is, yes. Yeah. It's it, it is within, it's within their rights. See, this, this, this is the problem I have with IBC. IBC is independent, but the independence does not mean that they are above the law, that they make their own set of laws. That is the problem. I think that the individuals inside IBC or whoever it is that gives them legal advice or whatever it is, sort of, sort of assumes that IBC can create laws, you know, and then they get into these problems whereby they're like, but we've already made provisions for this thing and you're like, no, you, yes, you made provisions for it, but no, that is not the, the laws law. have changed you, you since know? the provisions were made. Yeah. And again to take us to points we've discussed way before in how much time has been put in changing the laws and how much confusion that has created and when i was making my point earlier it's that we will need to review a lot of these things going forward yeah to make sure at least the process is aligned uh going forward so that we don't have an election like this
the problem with that is this, Marvin. But part of the things that I see in these uh, election amendments, and we'll have that discussion as and when it is signed into law, that clearly most of them are in controversial with the Constitution. All right? And like now, what? I mean, the simple things like you cannot say that the manual system is what that we have to go through the court, and and you can and you put a provision and say that in the event that you know a, a manual uh, result is brought in and you cannot have the, uh, the the other you know electronic one, an election cannot be nullified on that point of view. You cannot be seen to be trying to tell the Supreme Court what to do. You know, then in our constitution we talk about electronic transmission of results. You know, unless you have to go to a fund to change these things. So I think part of these things were made out of emotion. emotions, which it was not clear thinking. Of course, there are problems that must be fixed. There, there, there are, are problems. And that's what but, I'm saying. Yeah, but, but the, the, what we have at the moment on the table, I don't think that's the solution. Also, let's understand that uh, when we go to the elections, uh, we are going to go to these elections using their current laws. Sure, of yeah? course. Yeah. Not, not what's going to be signed. We're going to go into the elections using the current laws, the laws that exist today. NASA has promised a mother of all protests on 26. Mm -hmm. uh, they're saying that, you know what, they would have wanted to be part of this process. They feel that their rights uh, were not respected enough so that to allow them to participate in the election. And so following that, uh, they, they almost feel left out, locked out and left behind. Uh, and for that reason, there will be a mother of all protests, all right? So are you protesting or are you voting? One, of course, I'm voting. Number two, you cannot lock yourself in your house, and then you throw the keys outside the window, and then you say, uh, I'm, I'm locked in here, and I'm not allowed to live. It's ridiculous. Yeah? These guys have created a cocoon, They've created their own enemy. They've said they're not going to vote. Yeah, when the results come out, of course they're going to be crazy because they are they refuse to, to 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 go out and vote, and the entire reason for refusing to go out and vote is because they. Uh, and again, I know you're going to disagree. Um, they ex they expect a whooping. Yeah, they expect a whooping in the elections. They expect to lose, and. In such, the be how do you lose is a question they've been grappling with. How do they lose? And how they lose is by trying to muddy the waters as much as they can. Yeah? To m create a situation where they can claim that elections didn't happen or they were not free and fair. Otherwise, what you do is you do what Jubilee has been doing. Those guys have been ha holding rallies every day including the afternoon that uh, <laughs> the, 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 the decision was made by the Supreme Court. Starting that afternoon, today, there have been rallies. NASA has not held rallies, they've held press conferences. Yeah? They've, gone, they've just created this situation because they were not ready for the elections before and certainly they were not even prepared for a Supreme Court win. Two problems that I see 26th. Um, that one, you'd have part of the country coming out to vote. In large All numbers. Right? Yes, in large numbers. Um, and then you'll have part of the country depressed. Yes. All right? Depressed numbers. That one I think we can all see what's going to happen. Yes. Now, I don't see that as a legal problem per se, but it's I see not. it's a political, it's a political problem. problem. All right? Yes. Now, once that happens, the second question is this, that elections usually are supposed to do a few things. They're supposed to say, you know what, this is an end of one thing, yeah. and this one a political term, and then a beginning of another one. All right? It's also the end of a long and tiring and emotionally exhausting and strategizing and that sort of thing, uh, period, to a period where now, you know what, there is a government, there are people elected in office, they are, have certain promises to sort of, you know, achieve. Uh -huh. So we give everyone else a break who's not a politician, who's not a strategist, who's not a media person, you know, just everyone takes a break. Yeah. So that the guys who are involved in the real scheme of things do their work. Uh -huh. Now, the problem with, I think, with 26 is, all these lines have been blurred, all right? Yep. The 26th, it's, big, it's in many ways a beginning of something else, a, a beginning of another protracted political drama, yeah. you know, which could end up in courts. The level playing field, I'll have to put it in quotes, yeah? That's a political construct. 
Yeah, in my opinion. But, but see, we, we, it's we, a we, we cannot dismiss them. You no. cannot dismiss them, we, and precisely because even if you give them everything that they're asking for, yeah, some of which is actually ridiculous. But even if you give them everything they're asking for, that level playing field will change. They, the the goalposts will shift. But we don't know that. We haven't, you haven't given uh, them everything. <laughs> you so can, we, and we, which we, is we, why we it, that for also fact. you cannot right. have you cannot have a because a compromise situation where you say okay we have to reach a compromise i cannot come with my irreducible minimums and say you know what until these things until what we say happens because the elections are not for you the, the negotiations usually work like that you know i come with my demands you come with yours yeah, and then we meet the end, point of you know and, and, so, and so here's this, the this thing there is no point for, for them there is no point of of um, there's no that middle point is our way or the highway? But they've and, not and been engaged. No, of course they've, they've, they've been engaged. The, the problem with it, no, of no, course. I mean, of course look, they've look. been engaged. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't know. But from the, from where they sit, not support they sit. That you had them coming out of the Supreme Court uh, and getting that decision to have the election annulled. Then you have the reasons the Supreme Court gave, and part of the problems that they had was very specifically with a the transmission of the results. All right. They're using the OT and Morpho, the ballot printing. Those they had critical things that they had issues with. All right. Now, IBC from the second day, I think, on the twenty-first, if I'm not wrong, or twenty-second, when the decision we get the full judgment, IBC went and said, "Well, we already have a contract with OT and Morpho and a contract with Al Gurai, and it's continuing regardless of whatever." So that is not even part of what we to discuss. Okay. Now, that is all understandable, is well and good. But if an opponent, if a key stakeholder has a problem with one point of things, oh, yeah. Jubilee might not even have an issue with it. They might, they, it, it. It doesn't need Jubilee to have an issue with anything. Yeah. Okay. But since one stakeholder had an issue with it, the least that they could have had was to have an open hearing with the IEBC to at least say, what are some of those things? And that is what did happen. Of course they've talked. They've, be, they've been going to IEBC how long? Yeah. They, but they, they didn't get a result. And here's the thing, when someone explains to you, yeah, you want this, but as IBC, we are tied in one, two, three, four ways. But also remember this, yeah, the courts, yeah, the courts that, 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 that uh, they keep mentioning, yeah, the courts are the guys who actually overturn the results. They nullify those results. By virtue of nullifying those results, it means even if you go within the same system, yeah, and that system has problems, the same course will notify those results. CEO Ezra Chiloba uh, takes a holiday, three-week holiday. Uh, some newspapers are reporting that he's bowing to NASA's pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, other newspapers are saying, well, he's just taking a personal decision, uh, given that his name has been bandied about mm -hmm. in, in, in the press for the last, what, five or so weeks. Uh, but leaves us in this very awkward position whereby, in reality, we have eight, seven days to an yeah. election. So everything has been done, mm -hmm. all right? The setup has been done. The system has been done. He's hired, everyone needs to be hired, all right? It was not just him being there, it was his involvement, okay? So he's taking off for a holiday. What is he supposed to achieve? It's in NASA's uh, call for the guy to leave, even as soon as... Uh as recently as yesterday. I'm not sure yeah. they said he go for a holiday. No, they said he goes. He da they don't want him involved uh, in, the, in, the, in the process. But he's been involved. The, the, election, the election are actually seven days. Okay. No, again, also consider that uh, there was a committee that was set up yeah, is, in which he was excluded. Can, yeah. can, can, can I suggest one thing? Yes. As you make your point. The, point the, the job of a CEO, he is in many ways the PS of the commission. The, all right? In other words, the accounting officer. he's the accounting officer. So no one gets hired until Ezra Chiloba signs. Yes. All right? No check passes until Ezra Chiloba. No contract. All right? All that has happened. Mm -hmm. And it's done. Mm -hmm. And in my understanding, is what part of what NASA had a problem with. Because yes. in NASA's allegations, is that there are returning officers or presiding officers who contributed in the messing up of this election. There were individuals somewhere inside the ICT team who we hired who are part of this thing. So, all these things have been done. These guys were, when you look at the names that are proposed, it's a, it's a 
chairman who actually selected uh, the teams that were supposed to handle the the election it's called the, the, pro the, pro the project team the project team yeah. yeah it's the chairman who set up the project team yeah. not uh, not chiloba and his exit yeah because at the end of he feels he's being as you said uh, aptly him being there is going to be used as an excuse for xyz and he felt okay you know what i'll go yeah i'll step out let me ask this differently yes uh why wouldn't he have done this, say, on September the 2nd? No. I mean, I, he is we, not... So, no, for, this, for the purpose of... I mean, we don't know the reasons and why, but just for the purpose of saying, okay, so why now and not then? Because right now, given how everything is being... Um, politicized, given how media is reporting this, given the situations that are being created around us having some sort of like we are just about to go into some war zone, yeah, I think Busted right now, flames. yeah, we, that's what has been created, and just for some semblance of sanity, yeah, it says, you know what, if, if my name has any role to play in this, I'll step out. Back then, yeah, his back name, then, his, his, his he was name. not. Back then, he was not. And, and again, the Supreme Court said, "It's true. Yeah, it's true. There was no criminal liability." It's yeah. true. I mean, we we're taking his decision now to mean that it is out of his own good conscience. All right, that is what I'm assuming. Now, I understand why he's living today, but my question is, why not then? The environment we have now compared to September the first. Is, uh, is much different. Yeah? So, so his conscience has been educated over time. It's not educated. It's even. Um, it's even. Uh, look at what uh, goes on when you say you're not going to withdraw. When you have people, people's lives, especially the returning officers, being put under threat. When you have uh, these were situations that were not there. So uh, as as we near the elections, the stakes are going higher and higher. Yeah, because right now, the kind of violence that you're seeing, you're seeing guys walking around with knives going to uh, where IBC officers are being trained, surely. Uh, I, I think if, if there's anything he can do, because these are not things we were seeing back then. I'll just finish this point, but yes. I'll just recognize Chiloba's job yes. and his position to be so central to how the commission works. Yes. This is why there's a CEO. Okay? So are you, are you saying that um, these is not going to in any way influence NASA's position. I, Does I, that mean that now they are going to say that he's stepping away? Too late, too late. I, I, think, I think they will say that. And I, that for me is a very convenient excuse for them to continue around the line of thought that they've had for the longest time and because they do not want elections, period. All right. <laughs> it's a good place to end that. Some staff in Nyanza have withdrawn from participating uh, in, in uh, IBC's training, uh, but they've also had problems with uh, being attacked by, you know, uh, people in, you know, in the meetings and that sort of thing, uh, which is definitely a no-go zone and it shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, this kind of thing should not happen. But the governors in, in Nyanza have made it clear that there's no election that is happening in Nyanza. Mm. That they've pulled out, uh, elections should go anywhere else. They are not interested. Yeah. In fact, it's, you know, if you are to quote the words, they're saying, don't provoke us with an election <laughs> all right <laughs> we are out we've decided we don't want to vote do not provoke us if we don't want to vote it's as simple as possible the ballot boxes are there your decision not to vote doesn't have anything to do with the fact that ballot boxes are there yeah stay at home yeah you have no business going to attack officers who are being trained you have no business going to attack people who intend to vote yeah and for me, it feels like in the absence, because it's, it's, it's becoming quite clear that elections are going to happen. Yeah? And in the absence, uh, with the failure to stop the elections, what's the next best thing uh, they feel they can do? is to try and stop the elections. And by stopping them is prevent people from voting, prevent any IBC from getting ballot boxes there, prevent IBC from getting officers who can work in these areas because they'll fear for their lives. And following that, use that as, a, as, as evidence in the, in, the, in, the, in the Supreme Court to say that elections 
were mad with XYZ. They were not free and fair. They were not credible. So I think it's just a, it's just something they are throwing to to try and uh, and, and and claim that uh, elections are not free and fair afterwards. Mm -hmm. I don't think that supporters or anyone else should resort to violence so that to take matters into their own hands. And there's, there's no further. need to. For me, I'll go a step further and say that uh, even any pronouncements to the effect that no one should go out and vote, or they are going to punish or castigate anyone who is going out to vote, that should be looked at under the Electoral Offences Act. Because, again, that's an offence. President Uru Kenyatta sued Raila Odinga for contempt of court. The Jubilee Party sued NASA for contempt of court. Same difference. President Uru Kenyatta says that Raila's refusal to participate in the election is not only a contempt of court because the court ordered for an election within 60 days and wants the court to find him to be in contempt of court. And part of the thing is like you have to listen to this before 26th. So hoping by Monday or Tuesday the Supreme Court would have to sit and sort of make a decision yep. around this. But what? entertain me. Uh, I don't see any really positive the, the, thing coming out of this other than a losing streak, a continued losing streak. Uh, by who? On, on the legal team, you know, uh, Jubilee, whoever it is. I think this is the first case they've taken to court yes. with regard to the legal, uh, uh, yes. this entire legal conundrum. So it's a brainwave. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, brilliant. It's, it's first case they've taken to court, and um, which again is within their their right to do so. Absolutely. And um, I don't know. I wouldn't want to preempt. Uh, no, 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 no. We, we, we are we're not here trying to preempt what no, the court says and I'm what we'll do. What I'm saying is, even it's not even a matter of it's not even from that particular approach. I'm saying I w the reason I would not want to preempt what the Supreme Court will say is that. <laughs> Uh, you expect a loss. Right now, at this point in time, I don't know what any court says. <laughs> so we might just be surprised next week. Who knows? Final point, a minute or less. The push for Huru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga to have some sort of a discussion and chat. We spoke about this last week in length, so we'll not belabor the point. The, from where I sit again, I understand why I, I can tell Without, without fear of contradiction. I don't think Royal and Huru will sit down between now and of Thursday. Of course not. But they will sit down after Thursday. All right? Um, for this reason, I remember very well covering the 2007 elections. And in the middle of it, I was covering Kisi, moving around uh, to Kisumu, coming up back to, you know, parts of Rifti Valley and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the height of political violence, in the, in the height of the political disagreements of 2008, on January the 8th, President Kibaki announced a cabinet. And just that threw the whole spanner in the works. Because everyone was like, wait, we have a problem of an election that's been contested. But then you've moved ahead, already you've been sworn in the same night, then a few days later you've announced a cabinet. What kind of arrogance is that? Yeah. But what he was trying to do then was what I think Jubilee is doing today. It's Create to a sense of normalcy. <laughs> Without further ado. <laughs> we are not on the brink of war. Yeah, you're not. You don't have communities that are going to fight each other. Yeah, what you have is a legal problem to the extent where there are people who will try to prevent others from going out to vote. Yeah, uh, that is something which can be dealt with uh, with the police, by the police. Yeah. In terms of the candidates meeting, yeah, I, I know, again, uh, from a Jubilee standpoint, the, what you foresee is conversations around a coalition government, yeah, which is the last thing you want, which is the last thing this country needs. Yeah? Because, because this uh, government is already a Sumkata government. Uh, you, you, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. So you, you, you don't want that. Yeah. Yeah? No one wants that. This country doesn't need that, number one. Number two is that uh, that, kind of, uh, that kind of meeting yeah, already has already been preempted in terms of what even NASA said they're going to do on November 1st, which is call even a bigger protest 
to say that the president is in office illegally should there be not be an election uh, on the 26th. Yeah. So that now that creates, and if you see the cases have gone to court by proxies, uh, the NASA coalition, the cases have gone to actually to, to, to try and uh, pr uh, prompt the courts to, to declare that uh, the president will be in office illegally after, after November 1st. So right. I think uh, that meeting, for me, even, even if people feel it's prudent, uh, I don't think the motivations behind it are aligned. Right, so this week, the story for this week has been very simple. Uh, Jubilee has to get rid of a legal problem on Thursday, uh, have an election, make sure that you have, uh, at the very least, a second term beginning. NASA would be making sure, April 26th, that Jubilee actually has a real legal problem. That's where this, this thing sits, all right? From both political sides of view, yeah. that's how we play out, all right? Now, this show also has a biological clock. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the wise words of someone who said it on this show. I'm James Man. I'm having trouble.